Weeks. It's Wednesday, October 9th, 2024. Coming up on the program today, the idea of slathering God's remains in a sticky barbecue sauce has pissed off a southern preacher. Plus, speaking of blasphemy, one minister wants us to locate the Lord's G-spot and finding closure by consuming your husband's cremated remains. All coming up today. Distorted View Daily proudly presents a mother oversharing on her daughter's live stream. It wasn't just me and a woman. I've done threesomes, foursomes. My fantasy is to do a sevensome. Not all women either. All men. All oh, me. Yeah, you're welcome, ma'am. Yeah. I'm very open. You what? want me to tell you where the seven people will go? Oh, God. They said, yeah. I'll let you figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a spot for every person. Where will the other two go? You can't figure it out, figure it out. Think. I can think of five. Think. I can't think of two more. I'm a woman, and there are seven men. Think. I, I can think of five. Where will the other two go? Think. In your ear? Think. I'm covering everything. Ew. It's Distorted View Daily with Tim Henson. I'm retarded. Try new peanut butter eggs. Christian now fears his flatulence. A lot of uh, hot liquid poo just went out all at once. She is a fat cunt. Yes, Tim Henson back here with you for your Wednesday episode of TV. Have a great one for you. You know, I get questions all the time about uh, sound effects. Or drops I play on the show. Usually the question is, where did this sound drop come from? What's the source? 75% of the time, I don't remember. You know me, mind of an Alzheimer's patient. And I'm talking late stage Alzheimer's. You know, when it gets to the point where like the old people have forgotten everything, including how to speak. It's a lot of just like staring at walls and nodding. The only time my family speaks to me is to remind me to close my mouth because I'm drooling. We forgot to put the bib on Tim again. There's a puddle in his lap. Now we got to clean that up. That's how good my memory is. One clip people ask about all the time, and this is one I actually remember the source of, is uh, anytime something racist is said on TV, I uh, tend to play this. A lot of people don't know that is from an old MTV. It's not even really MTV. It's MTV2. That's probably why a lot of people aren't familiar with the show. Did you even know there was an MTV2? Well, there was. I don't know there still is. They ran a series called Wonder Shows In, which was a a hilarious but very adult parody of children's shows like Sesame Street or Mr. Rogers. They utilized puppets. They actually utilized real children. If you're a fan of Distorted View Daily, you're you're going to love Wonder Shows. And it only aired for a couple seasons. The world just wasn't ready. <laughs> you know, at the time when I first started using the That's Racist clip, Wonder Shows in either had just gone off the air or was still on the air. So a lot of people knew where that came from. But it's now like 20 years later. A lot of people haven't uh, been exposed to it, which is unfortunate. It's uh, truly a modern classic. Now, if you're on TikTok or Instagram, occasionally you will hear and see remnants of Wonder Shows in. Some famous bits include children dancing to a song all about slaves. Slaves built the pyramids. Slaves built the Parthenon. Slaves built America. Slaves, this is your song. Thank you. Slaves! It's a great song and a great message. Um, the song from Wonder Shows and that I have seen recently a lot on TikTok is uh, We Gotta Celebrate Our Differences. We got to celebrate our differences. We got to celebrate our differences. They're showing all the different cultures around the world. Ooga Booga and Ching Chong. Obviously, Mexico. It's beautiful. 
Uh, okay, you get the idea. Actually, there's one more clip I want to play. There's just so many great moments and fucked up segments. Um, <laughs> one of my favorite things. I don't know if this is this was like a popular segment on the show, but um, I loved it. It's where they just ask children questions. This used to be, I think, a um, a thing Sesame Street used to do. So the question posed is, what is love? Something that happened long time. An emotional mind field. Love is something special between my dog's butt and the carpet. That's a sissy excuse. Ask my cellmate. My daddy needs pills for love. <laughs> you know, obviously they were fed those lines, but I love hearing little kids talk like that. All right, so that's Wonder Shows in. As funny as that program was, the most hilarious Wonder Shows in clip I've ever heard doesn't even come from the show per se. It came from a Christian preacher who caught Wonder Shows in and thought it was a real kids television show. And he lost his goddamn mind. Oh, yeah. He performed a whole sermon about this show, which is like the greatest advertisement for Wonder Shows in, in my opinion. He's got the projector up with, with, with clips loaded and ready to go. As a matter of fact, we start with a uh, kid on the street interview uh, where a child is asking an adult, I guess a religious adult, uh, to describe themselves in one word while he holds up a card that reads moron, right? Pointed at her. Describe yourself in one word or less. What's this? This is daytime shows for children. He's already said two inaccurate things in that very first sentence. It wasn't daytime television, of course, right? This aired on MTV2 at night, you know, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock. But also, this was the beginning of the episode. And you know when the, the TV show starts, the very first thing that fades in is that box with the rating. TV7 or G or whatever it is. This this said TVMA, indicating this is not for children. It's for mature audiences. That is displayed for the entire congregation to see. And of course, no one questions it. Now, what I'm going to show you tonight, you will be shocked out of your seat. While mom and dad are in the bedroom watching their TV, kids at night gather around and watch MTV2 and MTV1, and look what they see. This is like an old school fire and brimstone preacher. I miss these kind of guys. You only find them now down in Texas. And that Pastor Steven Anderson, you know, he's always screaming about fags. We gotta behead the faggots. You know, like, <laughs> that's the only time you hear preachers get all riled up anymore. When they talk about gay people because they're like suppressing some sort of urge. That's right. Push those skeletons back in the closet there, Mary. Anyway, I love that this guy is so passionate about Wonder Shows in. Listen as they make fun of farmers. Some of you old ass listeners might remember on Sesame Street, they used to take this footage. I don't even know if it was recorded for Sesame Street, but they would like go to a carnival or a canning facility or, you know, someplace that has an assembly line or something. And then through this, they, you know, they sort of teach the kids what happens, what goes on at these facilities. How is paper made? We went to the paper mill. So this is Wonder Shows in parody of that. You're like, we went to the farm. They make fun of farmers. And you're going to see something here tonight that when I saw it, my stomach turned. How dare you make fun of farmers? They put food on our table. Have we got this bad off? Yes, he's very upset we're making fun of the poor, you know, mom and pop farm known as Tyson Chickens. He has a lot of feelings here. <laughs> has it come to this? It's about some kids who visit a farm. <laughs> I won't take time to show you the whole cartoon, but it winds up with God committing suicide. <laughs> First of all, it's not a cartoon. And I want you to watch what they do. We got to go to a farm. Farms are America's backbone. Farmers are America's dumb bone. Farmers. Around the f Farmers are America. You hear, you hear what they said? You hear what that kid said? He said a farmer was a dumb dumb and had dumb bones. Farmers are America's dumb bone. Yeah. Little brats wouldn't have a bite to eat. Somebody wasn't out there on the farm raising some food. Amen. Amen. Farm Peters, our parents were happy to see us. We were happy to see them. 
Watch this. They said, we were happy to see our parents so we could sacrifice them in the holy name of Lord Crondor. They said, <laughs> Yes, Lord Grondor. The faster parents to the devil. Is there anything funnier than people not getting the joke? You know, just like taking this so seriously. There's footage of like a man setting himself on fire. I don't know if that's supposed to be the kid's parents or what. I guess that's the sacrifice to, to Lord Grondor. This is satanic. You don't believe it? Sacrifice him in the dark holy name of Lord Grondor. See that again. Watch this. Yeah. We're glad. Oh, yeah. He's going to rewind it in case you missed it. This is very important. This is what they're airing. So we can sacrifice him in the dark holy name of Lord Crondor. Let's burn our parents to death. Boy, what entertainment for lots of little boys and girls. There's one episode in particular where, you know, one of the puppets and a real life child go to visit God. And uh, you know the preacher is going to seriously pop a few hemorrhoids watching that. And God has blowed up the earth and they're trying to get him. To I mean, how can you take this man seriously? God done did blowed up the earth. He literally said blowed it up. He blowed up the earth. And he thinks Wonder Chosen is a real children's television show. And they're trying to get him to put it together. Oh, and God has blowed up the earth. And <laughs> He's like a cartoon character. Trying to get him to put it together again. Watch it and weep, child of God. This is Yosemite Sam's church, isn't it? Why did you blow up the earth? Why did you blow up the earth? I didn't like the way you... Listen, he's God talking to him. ...was keeping the black man down. Yeah, so in the episode, the puppet Chauncey plays rock paper scissors with god and if chauncey wins then god has to you know um bring earth back Ooh, rock paper scissors you lose loser look the earth is back did you hear him call god a loser well that's what happened he lost rock paper scissors the earth was recreated though or reinstated however you want to look at it thanks god you're the greatest loser Anger washes over the congregation. Brother, if God spares this country, you do like the old creature said, he'd have to raise up Sodom and Gomorrah and apologize to him. He's so flustered, he can't even say Gomorrah right. They love to talk about Sodom and Gomorrah, you know, because it has to do with the wicked gays. It's one of those big words that Christians always get right. Not this guy, though. He's too upset. Sodom and Gomorrah! Or, you know, it's that Bible verse in Sodom and God, 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 after God loses rock, paper, scissors, uh, God is so distraught, he kills himself. Guys, I'm telling you, this show is amazing. You all should, you should, you should watch it. Buy it on DVD or streaming or whatever. I've never lost anything before in my life. It feels terrible. It's not so but God, no. no it's now God's going to commit suicide. Watch. All right, God uh, shoots himself, and that's when John C. says this. What are we going to do? I'm so hungry. Well, what are we going to do with him? And yet I'm hungry. And yet I don't know what we're going to do with God's body. Okay, you ready for this? They said God has killed himself. What are we going to do with his body? Watch it, child of God. Gosh, Caitlin, this meat is simply divine. I've got the spirit in me and it's not to my tummy. Thanks, Caitlin. They ate him. Did you hear what the little girl said? I gotta be honest with you, I don't really care what the girl said. I'm way more focused on what I heard coming out of one of the pews. If you listen very closely, there's a guy, I think it's a guy, who who is so shocked, he's like, Oh, my soul! Let me try to bump up the uh, volume here. They ate him. Did you hear what the little girl said? My soul! I'm surprised parishioners aren't fainting. There's some figurative... Uh, pearl clutching here, but unfortunately, no one needs medical assistance. He says this meat is simply divine. 
And the little girl takes a big bite off it and said, I've got the spirit in me and it's yummy to my tummy. As far as church sermons go, this is honestly one of the better ones. I wouldn't mind attending if we were just going to like pretty much watch an entire episode of Wonder Shows in, then hear a preacher lose his mind. That's entertainment. Pass that collection plate. You deserve a few bucks. Today's Wonder Shows in was brought to you by Whitey's Godtastic God Sauce. Whitey's God Sauce. Whitey's God Sauce Barbecue is what they're pouring on uh, the meat of God as they're, as they're eating it. Hey, uh, real quick, before we end this segment, let me just leave you with a little bit of Wonder Chosen trivia, in case you are a fan of the show. Whip this one out. This little, this little nugget at the next party. You'll, you'll be a, a hit. The creator of Wonder Chosen also writes for South Park and voices um, the character Towley. So... Yeah, pretty impressive knowledge, huh? All right, uh, let's move on. It does seem like I've been ragging on Christians a lot as of late, but I want you to know that I understand that Muslim craziness is like on a whole other level. I am aware, and I hope you are too. And if you're not aware, let me give you one short example of the kookiness. Now, if we have any Muslim listeners... First of all, I hope you feel comfortable listening to this podcast. This is a safe space. Also, death to infidels. There, I'm on your side. Please feel free to call into the show and um, defend yourself. Explain what the hell this is all about. Like, is this a widely held belief and practice? Is everyone doing this? I feel like this kind of goes against human biology. In this clip, we've got uh, some sort of Muslim leader... Maybe a cleric. I think there are such things as Muslim clerics. That sounds about right. He's some high up there muckety muck. And uh, he's telling us all how we should be peeing. I've got a news flash for you. Most of us are doing it wrong. You know how like uh, you go. <laughs> Here, I'm going to explain how people pee now. Most people, not Muslims, apparently. You know how like uh, you go to the toilet and you, you give that little like pelvic push you kind of, I don't know, like squeeze that muscle or something to get the piss coming out. I mean, whatever it is to make the pee come out of your dick hole. I don't know what that move is called. I don't know what you're activating, but you're doing something. Otherwise, you'd just be pissing all willy-nilly in your pants all the time, right? It would just come dribbling out. Something keeps you from urinating in inopportune times. This is how you're supposed to do it if you're Muslim. You have to urinate. Okay, we've all been there. I'm with you so far. Without squeezing or contracting your muscles or touching your private part, if nothing comes out, overwhelm it with water. And this is where you lost me. You're not allowed to squeeze or contract muscles. You're not allowed to touch your penis. Your bladder is just supposed to start emptying itself at the, at the correct time. And if it doesn't, I guess you waterboard your cock. That's what this guy is saying. Submerge it in water. Try to drown the little fucker. Make him squirm. Overwhelm it with water. Sprinkle water inside your underwear. Lift up your trousers and move on. People always give examples of how the Muslim religion is nuts, like how they treat women. They argue it's a very violent religion. It, you know, it goes on and on. This is all I need to hear. This is about as crazy as it comes. What's worse than, like, having to pee and not being able to? For whatever reason, you're either, like, not near a toilet or you're not allowed to work your bladder muscles and make the piss come out. Then on top of it, now you've got to, like, spray down your underwear and water? And you're you're walking around in damp clothing. It's gone from bad to worse. It's like punishment for your dick not working. Sprinkle water inside your underwear. Lift up your trousers and move on. Whatever feeling you get that, oh, I must have dropped something. Something might have uh, come out. Ignore it. And inshallah, in four to five days, this feeling would go away. And all of your prayers are valid. And these are all negligible, inshallah. I'm sorry, what? If these are his thoughts on men urinating, I would love to get his opinion on Wonder Chosen. Real quick before we move on, I want to turn our attention back to bad Christian sermons. We've heard the old, loud, white Southern preacher scream about MTV. Let's check in with a black church and uh, see what they're talking about. I said, when's the last time you had a, a spiritual orgasm and made God orgasm through your presence of praise? Now that is a question I don't feel comfortable answering. 
What God and I do in the privacy of our bedroom is no business of yours, sir. Stop fishing for information. I'm not going to tell you how I made God come. I will give you a hint, though. It involves toes. I had a hunch after reading the Bible that God was a foot freak. You know, there's all those passages about people washing Jesus' feet and stuff. I mean, the signs were there, so I tried stuff, and it, you know, it blew his mind. I'm a very good lover. What's funny about this particular sermon is that the pastor could sense his congregation's reaction when he started talking about making God orgasm. And he even said, I'm going to stop talking about this. I can see this ain't working out. But then it's like he realized he had nothing else prepared. So he just continued to go on, (laughs) go on with it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to get off of that because I see y'all looking down. Uh Uh-huh. Yes, but... Get off that. Probably for the best. An authentic high praise. Hallelujah. Uh Uh-huh. Busting nuts here and there. This is how you're getting off that? Now you're talking about busting nuts? You know, after playing all these clips, it just makes me angry that I was raised Catholic. Catholic church or mass or whatever is so boring. It's long A bunch of it is, like, in Latin. You're standing up, sitting down, shaking hands. It's boring. Not once did I ever watch a film where God commits suicide and then puppets ate him with barbecue sauce, nor did any priest talk about making God climax. The closest thing to excitement that ever happened to me was being molested. But even then, big deal. Pretty much every altar boy did, you know? It's like, nothing special about that. And uh, we're not even halfway through this clip, I think. Uh Uh-huh. Don't you know God created you to bust a nut? Not just for you, but he wants you to help him bust a nut. (laughs) Hallelujah. You're not getting a lot of amens from the congregation, I noticed. Uh Uh-huh. The Lord didn't make me a doctor for nothing. I understand, hallelujah, that he wants, he is an emotional being. Uh Uh-oh, uh-oh, I'm in trouble now. (laughs) I'm in trouble now. Hallelujah. God, somebody say penetrate. Oh, my God. What the fuck? (laughs) Uh Uh-huh. God is ready for us to hit his G-spot. Yes. Well, yeah. There is no topping that. And that's where the clip ends. Pretty sure everyone walked out after that comment. I mean, if you really dissect what he just said there hitting god's g-spot first of all you're referring to god as a woman which is like blasphemous and the idea is that you're 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 gonna penetrate god it's even worse if you're not insinuating that god is a woman and you're talking about god's male g-spot so now we're fucking god up the asshole i mean there's a sextastic tuesday story in there somewhere but I don't think it's appropriate for church. All right, uh, well, there you go. Just some religious clips for your Wednesday. Some of you freaks have been asking about Mead Skelton. I do have an update for you. Now, Mead was supposed to do his weekly weigh-in, and he postponed it a few times, which leads me to believe that, you know, he stepped on the scale, and he's been gaining weight, and so he, like, he punts it, right? He's like, all right, well, I'll, I'll weigh in in a couple days. And they're giving him a chance to lose that weight, right? And then that doesn't happen, and then he postpones the weigh-in again. Well, in this newest video, he still hasn't weighed himself, but he wants to give us an update. Take it away, Mead. Hey, Ken. Um, so what we'd uh, like to talk about in this update is just where I am right now. I know I've been stuck at 270 for the last four months but in that time i've really learned about my triggers and what to do and so don't forget your amazing blood pressure try to mix it up make sure you tout that a little bit some days i only have two meals like breakfast and supper i might even skip dinner in the middle um, because i just like to have um, that space but what i do is like what i say is i have a big ass breakfast whoa i don't think i've ever heard mead swear before I mean, ass isn't really a a, a horrible word. It's not a fuck or a cunt. But still, I don't think I've ever heard Mead say ass. It just sounds weird coming out of his mouth. All right, go on. But what I do is like what I say is I have a big ass breakfast, as the colored people might say, have a big ass breakfast. This fucktard cannot not be racist. 
you know, people corner him all the time and they they say, Mead, you're, you know, you're racist. And he'll be like, no, nah, no, nah, I love all people. I have never once said anything racist. Meanwhile, Callie Malley in the Discord provided a screenshot of a forum post over there on uh, the Looks Max message board. Mead Skelton is known to post there just like he does the Apricity. It's really similar content. As a matter of fact, Mead started a thread just a few days ago. Is it racist if you call yourself the N-word? He goes on to write, I'm white. We know. <laughs> but your name is Mead. Anyway, I'm white and I call myself a N-word, except he spells it out, you know. I call myself an N-word almost every day. I call my birds that too. I wish someone would just follow Mead around with a camera for an entire day. I mean, it would only work if Mead didn't know they were filming. Like, I want this to be totally candid. I can't. I mean, this just sounds surreal, right? He's just he's talking to it. He's calling his birds racial slurs. Like, what did, what did the bird? Is it because the bird shit in the cage? Like, are you mad? You're mad at the bird? Is that why you're calling it the N word? I call my birds the N word. I call my birds that too. I don't think it's racist. Of course, he's not just racist to black people. Ooh. Oh, I can do. <laughs> let me do. Uh, let me do Japanese. Um, um, Ring of Fire. <laughs> Reverend Skullfucker posts this in the Discord okay. as well. Wait a minute. See. Uh, uh, we all remember this, of course. Uh, 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 he's having trouble finding his racist Japanese voice. Here we go. Hello, my name is Harry Kawasaki, and I sing for you, Johnny Cash song, Ring of Fire. At least his accent is accurate. That's really how Japanese people talk. Very funny. I fell into the burning ring of fire, went down, 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 the plane burning higher, and it burn, 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 the ring of fire, the ring of fire. <laughs> Ah, well, you know, the Japs just love their country music, so... I think Callie Malley sums it up perfectly. How is he a real character? How? That's our mead. Anyway, back to the clip at hand here, which I believe is just going to be excuses why he's still fat. But I try to do the uh, two two meal a day. Uh, sometimes I get so busy, and because I have um, irritable bowel syndrome, um, it does make uh, it just I don't. It's inconvenient for me to eat. It's like you're giving all these reasons why you should be thin. I only eat two meals a day. I'm very busy. Sometimes I even forget to eat. I'm so busy. What are you busy doing? You don't have a job. You don't do anything. You live stream once every two weeks. Oh, that really takes it out of me. You're not even going to the gym right now, you know? That, in combination with his IBS, the very idea of eating turns me up, makes me nauseous. Because it means more trips to the bathroom. So sometimes, yeah. like, I have to go to work, so I just have breakfast. Then I don't, I, I work, worky work, and then I come home and have my supper. Spoken like a masculine straight man. Worky work. I've also eliminated a lot of my Sunday dessert splurges. Okay, all I hear are your flapping gums. Why wouldn't you just step on the scale, right? You're making a video. It takes two seconds. You know, like, he just, he doesn't want to. I mean, just be honest. Just say, look, I'm not going to weigh myself anymore. It's not worth the aggravation, the, the, the negative comments, and the asshole podcasters talking about me. I'm just going to try to lose weight on my own. And if I look thinner, then you'll notice it. But I guess that would kind of defeat the purpose of his entire fit and lean channel. You know, I don't think I think people underestimate how strong us fat folk are. I saw a lady on my six hundred pound lights, big black lady. She's about seven hundred pounds, and she had no trouble walking down the street. She just walked like it was nothing. Jesus Christ! Talk about moving the goalpost. Now, Mead is like, you know what? Being fat is not all that bad. You got a lot of strength. And that's important if you want to be fit. A lot of people are fit and strong bodybuilders. They're big. So you can be really fat. You could be morbidly obese. 700 pounds he's talking about. You wouldn't believe the strength that 700 pound woman had. Mead's got got new goals. I'm just going to take that scale in the other direction. My new goal is to hit 600 pounds by Christmas. You know what? I think you can do it. I believe in you. 
how strong she must be to carry all that weight. You know, it's sort of blessed. It's one way of looking at it. And a curse, but I mean, uh, it makes you stronger, definitely. I mean, you're carrying a lot around a lot of weight. Um, it's like carrying all this weight around you. You have, you have to be strong. The other thing you find out in this video is Mead is turning into one of those annoying fat activists. He's really settling in to this idea of just being plus size. Now it's all like, you have to be super strong to be fat. How else are you going to carry that gunt around? And now uh, he's going to talk about um, how people are tr- fat people are treated. They're treated worse than uh, homeless or junkies. But it doesn't seem to work that way. And I do, it does seem to me that people have more empathy for some junkie on the street than they do a fat person. You know, someone can be a drug addict all strung up on meth. Oh, that poor meth addict. But if you just like a few extra donuts with your coffee, oh, you're a big, fat, ugly pig. Shame on you. No self-control. So you can be a drug addict or a, you know sex addict or something. Now, to be fair, he does say, you know, he wants to make it very clear that he is not pro-obesity. I'm not saying that fat is good. Okay, obesity is ugly. It's disgusting. Sending some mixed signals there, but okay. Towards the end of the video, Mead adjusts some of his goals. Guys, the weight loss is coming. Uh, I believe next year will be the year that I really do come into my own. And yep. The year of Mead, 2025. And all the skills I'm gaining in this, folks, because I didn't have a clue about diet and exercise. Really. Oh, my God. It's not that difficult to comprehend. I've read so many books, taken seminars, watched videos, gone to doctors. It's like, just stop eating so much and be more active. Burn more calories than you are consuming. It's difficult in the sense that you have to put in the work, but it's easy to wrap your mind around what you need to do. Stop acting like this is like some great mystery. Uh, I've been researching this for a long time. I found some ancient scrolls that help me. (laughs) It's like, what? What? The minds had the right idea. What happened to that pill that he was taking? He was taking some supplement he really thought was going to help him. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. That's what Mead has been up to. Basically, that update amounts to uh, nothing. Same old bullshit. Uh, And that's Mead in a nutshell. Uh, And with that, let's get into the crazy, bizarre twist. Did I fuck that news? Drama! Get more Distorted View daily every week and support this show so it continues for a long, long time. Become a member of the Sideshow. There's a couple ways to sign up. Superfreaksideshow.com. If you go through the website, you get a personalized RSS feed that you can plug into a lot of podcasting apps like Apple Podcasts, Overcast, Pocket Cast, Podcast Addict, you know, the big ones. For an even easier way to gain access, if you happen to use Apple Podcasts or Spotify, you can sign up right inside of the apps. Just search for Distorted View. You'll find a button or link to tap to subscribe to the exclusive content we do every week. Actually, multiple shows throughout the week, typically two to three exclusive podcasts. Yesterday was a Sideshow exclusive episode, and I'll be doing another one tomorrow. Uh, memberships are very inexpensive, only $6.99 a month, even less when you opt for a quarterly, semi-annual, yearly, or lifetime membership. This is how I make my living. This is why Distorted View Daily is still around. So if you like the program, please consider supporting it. Uh, there is one other way to help us out. We've got a Patreon account, patreon.com slash distorted view. If you pledge at least $5, you get access to a special voicemail line where I will play your calls first. And I believe we do have some patrons checking in today. Uh, We also have some higher tiers. If you pledge at least $20 a month, occasionally I will send out Distorted View merchandise to you. Uh, Last month, we sent out Distorted View umbrellas. Got some emails recently saying they, uh, they love their umbrellas. And I plan on doing another Distorted View merchandise drop, whatever you want to call it. Uh, one more time this year uh, for the holidays. So now is a great time to sign up for that. Patreon.com slash Distorted View. Okay, three very quick stories now. First up, have you ever heard of a woman being nearly killed by cauliflower? Probably not, because that sounds stupid. But it actually happened. And no, it's not because, like, you know, the cauliflower was tainted. She wasn't even eating the cauliflower. It dropped on her head. Now the story's getting interesting, huh? So this wasn't just like a piece of cauliflower, not a a, a, a floret, I think they're called, right? This was like a big honking bowling ball size, like full ball of cauliflower. 
I'm assuming if there's a lawsuit over this, a woman has alleged that a shopping trip over there in the UK took a dramatic turn when she was hospitalized after a cauliflower fell on her head. Sammy May, 42, from Kingston, southwest London, was on holiday with her husband when she says the vegetable dropped from heaven. God is pissed at her, right? Uh, The vegetable dropped from a shelf in the store's discounted items section. So this was like near expired cauliflower. Uh, It fell an estimated four feet right on the woman's noggin. And according to May, the impact caused her to lose consciousness. So that's, that's some weighty cauliflower. Or she's got a very soft head. Gotta be honest with you, I never really cared for cauliflower. Surprise, surprise. Tim doesn't like a vegetable. Interestingly, I love broccoli. And, uh, you know, those two things are very similar. Like, cauliflower is just like albino broccoli. I don't like albino people either. They're weird, and I think they, they have a smell to them. Why is that? You know, they got that real pink skin and those red eyes. Demons. They look like, uh... Like evil rabbits, you know, like those white fluffy rabbits. You know what I'm talking about? Satanic. No, no, no. I, I don't care for anything albino. Anyway, uh, that's neither here nor there. When she finally came to, uh, the cauliflower was beside her. She claims that Waitrose staff, I guess that's the store, simply placed the cauliflower back on the shelf following the incident. It's still sellable. May was transported to the hospital where she was diagnosed with post-concussion syndrome after experiencing uh, symptoms including a severe headache, dizziness, and nausea. The longtime uh, Waitrose customer expressed frustration with the store's response saying she felt insulted by the offer of a 25-pound voucher and 8 pounds to cover taxi fare. Well, how much do you think this little mishap is worth? You know, you you went to the hospital for free, you know, because you live in the UK, so you can't claim medical bills. They paid for your ride home, right, because you were all dizzy and nauseous. 25 pounds is about 32 US dollars. I guess maybe I would have bumped that up to 50 or 100 just to get her out of our hair. And if she did not take me up on that offer, I'd start chucking other heavy vegetables at her. Hopefully it'll knock her out again. A butternut squash to the forehead, cabbage to the temple. The woman said this whole thing really spoiled her holiday. May and her husband contacted the store's customer service team two days after the accident, but were told that any further action would require legal involvement. Quote, I've been unwell since the incident and I'm unable to work. Sounds like she's milking it. I don't understand how the cauliflower fell. Cauliflower. Some people pronounce it cauliflower. To me, though, that's like um, those annoying people who pronounce T's and words too hard. Would you like a Kamala Harris button? We're giving out free buttons. It's like it's a button. It's very, it's, it's tricky because it drives me crazy when people are like, button. Do you want a button? But it also drives me crazy when people say button. You know, it's, it's got to just be button. Do you want a button? Would you like a button? Not button. You all need to learn how to speak properly like me. I'll teach you. Use Distorted View Daily as a template. I pronounce every word flawlessly. I don't understand how the cauliflower fell, but uh, heavy round objects like that should not be stored on the top shelf. A spokesman for the store said our customer was seen immediately by a trained first aider, and we are sorry to hear that she is unwell. We take customer safety very seriously and have thoroughly investigated the case. We remain open to any further information she wishes to provide. So there you go. That's what's happening in the UK. Might be another one of those slow news days. My top story is cauliflower fell on a woman's head in the UK. All right. uh, Second story we have for you. Jessica Waite from Calgary faced unimaginable heartbreak after the unexpected death of her husband, Sean, during a business trip to Texas. Texas. He's dying in Texas. He's dying in Texas. Well, it wasn't the only loss that shattered her world. Shortly after Sean's passing from a heart attack, Jessica uncovered a disturbing secret that turned her grief into a whirlwind of betrayal. Which sounds like a Lifetime original movie, doesn't it? Whirlwind of betrayal after the season finale of Drop Dead Diva. Or whatever the hell they're airing over there on Lifetime these days. She did not handle this betrayal, I feel, in a healthy way. Here's what happened. As she navigated the chaos of funeral arrangements and cared for their nine-year-old son, Jessica discovered Sean's hidden life. 
while trying to access information on his iPad. A routine search for the Houston hospital storing his remains revealed far more than she anticipated. Just after typing HO, (laughs) H-O, as in hospital, Jessica was shocked when the search suggestions filled with inquiries about Houston escorts, (laughs) or Houston hoes, leading her to scroll through his search history. You should not have done that. At least, you know, if you wanted the uh, memory of your husband to remain untainted. Uh, All right. So what followed was an alarming list of inquiries about services, locations and prices that painted a much darker picture of the man she had been married to for 17 years. Over time, Jessica unraveled the full extent of Sean's actions. Her husband, whom she believed to be loyal, has been involved in numerous affairs and was deeply entrenched in an obsessive pattern of visiting sex workers and collecting inappropriate content online. Okay, so that's just like viewing porn. I can understand being upset about the you know prostitute thing, but the term collecting inappropriate content is probably worse than it sounds. Sean's compulsions were not limited to infidelity, though. His late-night work sessions were actually dedicated to curating a massive archive of pornography. Oh, massive? Depending on your definition of massive, this could be a problem, which Jessica would later discover was categorized meticulously on a personal hard drive. Jessica shares these experiences in her book. Oh, okay, so she's selling something here. The Widow's Guide to Dead Bastards. Based on the title, it doesn't sound like she's forgiven him quite yet. In the book, she details her husband's double life. She describes how Sean's hidden uh, addiction to internet porn and escorts consumed not only him, but threatened to pull her into his dark world. Lady, you didn't know any of this until after he passed away. So, you know, he hid it well and it didn't consume his life that you knew like something was up with him. He was a functioning porn and sex addict. Come on, give him some props here. Despite the devastation, Jessica has also expressed her eventual path to forgiveness. Mm. Remember that for a second. Uh, She reflects on the good times they shared before his spiraling into deceit. One thing she noticed uh, was opening his credit card bills after he died. You know, there were like all these um, charges for dinners, basically dinners for two. Everything was ordered in pairs, bottles of Prosecco, breakfast for two in the morning, you know pretty obvious he was you know fucking and keeping these ladies uh, overnight she even told a mutual friend that she suspected sean brought escorts back to his room and then that mutual friend was like oh i have some information for you sean actually told me he was having an affair with someone he met at work in addition to all the whores He was just fucking all around. All right, so Jessica lost her mind at that point. Remember when I said that uh, she likes to focus on remembering the good times? Well, that's after she ate his ashes. Yeah, I bet you to her, it was like a way of controlling him, right? And like, you know, you want to be fucking these other broads? Yeah, well, you're going to be inside of me. Now you're a part of me forever. Or until I take a shit, I guess. I don't know how ashes are processed through the body. Yeah, Jessica said the truth, like, it drove her crazy. So one day, still furious, she cut open the uh, bag that contained his remains, his ashes, carried them into her garden, mixed them with dog feces, and then you ate it? Dog feces should not be used as a chaser, honey. Uh, Then she, okay, she threw the mixture into the trash. Then she felt bad about that, right? Now she's suffering from guilt. And so she took more of his ashes, and then she ate them. Cuckoo! Like, bitch, is just totally off the deep end now. I know this whole article is basically just a giant plug for her book, um, but it's working. I kind of want to read it. If she does more crazy stuff like that, I mean, that's the very definition of a page-turner. She has since gone to therapy. She's sought psychological and spiritual support. Uh, Years later, she's now started a new chapter, having found someone else and dedicating herself to helping others confront their own grief. Oh, I feel so bad for her new husband. You know, she's not a very trusting person at this point. You are going to give me all of your logins and passwords. We're doing weekly checks. I'm going through your search history. Sorry, that's just how it's going to be. Once bitten, twice shy. All right. uh, Final story we have for you today. I don't know what the hell's going on over there on uh, Tybee Island in Georgia. But I think maybe there's some bad drugs floating around. Isn't Tybee Island, like, um, fancy, right? Like, rich people live there? 
you don't typically hear about uh, nuttiness going on uh, in, on Tybee Island. So uh, two things happened on Tybee. Uh, the Tybee Island Police Department dealt with two peculiar incidents over the course of two days involving an intoxicated man dressed as Waldo, as in where's Waldo, and then a separate altercation at a local nursing home. On the evening of September 20th, an intoxicated man flagged down a police officer after being removed from a bar. The man, who was wearing a red and white striped shirt resembling the iconic character Waldo, told the officer he had been verbally assaulted when a bystander jokingly asked, Where's Waldo? He didn't like that. He wasn't trying to be Waldo. He didn't appreciate being compared to Waldo. This is a hate crime of sorts. At least according to the man who looked a lot like Waldo. Interesting uh, factoid about Where's Waldo. It, uh, originally, it was published in the UK. That's where the author and illustrator is from. There's only, I don't know why. This is so crazy. But yesterday, I literally was just on Wikipedia reading about Where's Waldo. I don't know why. Don't ask me. I just... For some reason, that thing, it, it popped in my mind, and I was like, I need to I need to learn more about Waldo, like the origins of Waldo, how this came about, how many books there are in the series. By the way, there's seven, only seven, in the mainline Where's Waldo series. Now, there's some, like, spinoffs, and there's, like, activity books, and other, you know, there's other Where's Waldo things, but, like, as for, like, mainline Where's Waldo books, there's seven. And, you know, this franchise, the, the Where's Waldo franchise, has been going on for decades and decades. It's amazing that there's only seven books. I think they've sold like 70 million copies or something. You'd think there'd be more. Uh, the other interesting thing is in the UK, those books are called Where's Wally. And the name was changed for the United States because I guess no one is named Wally here in the US, which is crazy. I honestly don't know. Like, it's dumb. There's definitely Wallies. There's more Wallies than Waldos. In the U.S. I don't know why they changed the name. It doesn't make sense. I couldn't find the answer to that in the Wikipedia article. Anyway, this guy looked like Waldo. Uh, someone screamed, where's Waldo? And then he got all mad and called the cops. According to the police department's weekly report, the man had been forcibly ejected from the bar after he became irate when employees refused to serve him more alcohol. Bar staff reported that the man, already visibly drunk, began to physically push the DJ after repeated attempts to get more drinks. When he refused to leave voluntarily, he was escorted off of the premises by security. Was it the DJ that called him Waldo? No further action was taken following the report, and the police department did not indicate any criminal charges related to that particular incident. In a separate and far more serious altercation, the following day on September 21st, police responded to a call from a local nursing home regarding a stabbing. This incident began when one resident accused another of stealing his can of Vienna sausages, which is, I'm pretty sure, a felony. At least old people would probably consider it a felony. Vienna sausages are very important to old fucks. Who else is eating Vienna sausages? No one. No one under the age of 55 is eating Vienna sausages. I ate them as a child. Because I was poor. Again, I told you I lived in a trailer for a while. But more importantly, my dad is a redneck. He'd have jars of pig's feet and shit in the refrigerator. When your only options for lunch are Vienna sausages and pig's feet, you go with Vienna sausages. The argument over the Vienna sausages escalated quickly with one resident allegedly brandishing a knife and promptly stabbing the other right in the chest. You know, as far as meats go, or more specifically, meat-like products, Vienna sausages are very inexpensive. It's not worth stabbing someone over. The injured resident was taken to a nearby hospital for treatment while the suspect was arrested on charges of aggravated assault and possession of a knife during the commission of a crime. Again, it was a weird couple of days on Tybee Island. Uh, so there you go. That's what's happening in your world today. Freaks, let's do a couple voicemails and get the hell out of here. Many ways to contact the show, show at distortedview.com, although right now your email is going to be buried, lost within a mountain of, like, political money-begging donations. I get it from both sides. You know, I have to sign up for these websites and shit to actually see content, and then I get on their mailing list, and so Trump is always hitting me up for money, as is Kamala and Tim Walls. As a matter of fact, I just got one from Tim Walls. I love I love when it's, like, from Tim Walls. Like, he's like my buddy. They make it sound like it's a personal message to you. Dear Timothy, it would be great if you could please 
chip in. Right? It's always that's what it is. It's like not donate. You you're just chipping in. Help. Come on. Be a buddy. Be a neighbor. Give us fucking cold hard cash. Anyway, um, this one, you know, I'm a sucker for dogs, and I felt so bad. I saw this like this message from Tim Walls, who has like this uh, very cute black dog, and it was like a picture of uh, the, the dog's name is Scout. And I saw it, and it's, like, all about... Like, the first paragraph is, Tim, it's hard to believe looking at us now. There's a photo of him and Scout. But bringing our dog Scout into the family took some convincing. And I'm like, oh, my God, what happened to Scout? Did Scout die? Like, something horrible happened. And then I'm like, I'm getting mad at Tim Walls. I'm like, how dare you use your damn dog's death as an excuse to, like, hit me up for money? That's not cool. Although, thinking about it, maybe I should have done that when my last dog died. Why didn't I, like put on the waterworks and ask for you know paypal donations and stuff here on the podcast i love that dog you know he went to the rainbow bridge the fucking rainbow bridge uh they're always talking about the rainbow bridge i hate that makes me cry every time though (laughs) when i you know like when someone posts on facebook or something like oh you little scruffy cross the rainbow bridge I, i it drives me crazy because i i hate that you know that stupid thing you know, with dogs on the rainbow bridge and everything. That is that story, but it still gets to me every time. Anyway, uh, so he goes on and he's talking about how he got this damn dog scout. I promised my son if we if uh, if I won, you know, the governor or whatever, I'd uh, welcome a puppy into our home. I didn't think much of it at the time, but as any parent knows, kids remember everything. So, you know, he had to go uh, rescue Scout. The truth is, Scout rescued us just as much as we rescued him. Like, it's totally a eulogy for poor Scout. Turns out, it's not. It's just, like, a story about Scout. And I'm like, okay, Tim Walls, we get it. You're down to earth. You're from Minnesota. You're a regular guy. You're a dad. I bet you when he was writing this email, he was like, damn, if only the dog was really dying. Of course, he loves Scout, but this message would be way more powerful if there was a dead animal on the table here. He ends the email like, I made a promise to my son and I'll always keep my promises with you. I'm like, okay, that's a stretch. I see see the connection there between getting the dog, promising the kid the dog, and you promising shit for, you know, being vice president. But I'm not going to donate any money to you. Nice try, though, dude. Nice angle with the dog thing. It's like, you know your audience. I could see why you think I'd be a, a good bet. Love puppies, but uh, no, that's not going to happen. All right. Anyway, so uh, yes, contact the show, show at distortedview.com. Maybe a better way is just to use the voicemail line, 206-666-4463. Kamala and Trump have not jammed uh, the voicemail line yet, so you can still get through. All right. Let's check in with a few patrons today. Timmy Boo, mad scientist, check it in. I've been back on the side show for about a week now. And I got to tell you, that's money well spent. Do you hear that? Do you hear that? Everyone listen to Mad Scientist. He knows what he's talking about. It's good money. It's great. Thank you. I have a three-hour drive on Mondays and Fridays to get to and from my work site. And I used to be able to, of course, I could download a bunch of stuff from the free side, and I did that for a little while, but it's not good enough. That's right. You need more. new enough. I need my finger on the pulse of the distortion. I'm a scientist. I need new data. <laughs> and all the data says, everybody should sign up for the Sat Show. Everyone have a great weekend. Bye-bye, Timmy Boo. All right. Uh, he called last Friday. I'm playing catch up on some of these uh, patron calls here. Hey, Timmy. It's uh, Bigfoot is my daddy here. Hello. Um, great username. I haven't called in a while um, because uh, my whole city got destroyed. Oh, no. You're not one of them, are you? Living in North Carolina um, or Tennessee or something? I live right outside of Asheville, Ooh. Uh, North Carolina, of course. And, uh, yeah, that hurricane absolutely fucked him. Hmm. Um. So I haven't had power or cell signal for like a fucking week and a half. Almost oh two my weeks god! At this point. Uh, finally got water back uh, the other night, so I've actually been able to take a shit in my own bathroom and flush the toilet. Um, although apparently the water is not safe to like bathe or cook with, Ugh. so. 
I know some places, for whatever reason, for uh, maybe contamination or something, they will only allow, like, they'll turn on the water, like, the city will turn on the water for an hour or two a day, and you just gotta, like, use as much water as you can in that time, and then they turn it off for, for the next, you know, 20 hours until the next day You're or something. smelly as hell. Yeah. I've maybe... You gotta burl that. Had a total of three showers in the past two weeks. Oh, I'm sure uh, you smell delightful. Um, that whole town must just smell awful right now. So, my dick may not be a foot, but it sure smells like one. <laughs> uh, that or I have desecrated and sodomized the uh, rotten corpse of a pig that's been out in the Texas sun for five days. Okay. Um, Vivid imagery there. Other than that, uh, everybody in my little family and everything's good good um i'm actually able to like get out of town a little ways and get to work and stuff so you still have to work um i'm probably trying to they get they can't give you a week or two off to you know get your fucking life back together caught up on all your episodes but uh thank you for um making some funny ass shows and yeah, thank you. now that i can actually listen to them i'm not incredibly fucking bored at the house wanting to end my own life uh, joking about that, but uh, so. <laughs> as far as uh, Kia Seltos Seltos I um, <laughs> or Kia in general, uh, you know, I don't really have much of an opinion of them. They're cheap, you know. Buy the extended warranty if you got one. It's going to eat the engine. Event. Oh, oh, my friend, I don't buy Kias. I lease them. Actually, that's just how Kia is. Um, Although I'm, th- you know, I keep thinking like the, my next car, I just want to, I want to buy. So when I'm done making payments, I'm done making payments, you know, because it's like I'm basically renting a vehicle. Although, you know, on the flip side, if you buy a car, then you're on the hook for all the upcoming repairs and everything. At the end of my couple of years, three years, I just turn it, turn the car over, you know, but, uh, I basically you- don't have to pay for any problem I have. You know, I like some of the new cars they're coming out with. Uh, and Hyundai too, like a lot of Kias and Hyundai's sports cars and stuff that they're coming out with are really fucking cool. Yeah. Um, I'm hoping some cool stuff comes out in the next year. I think I have like, uh, 13 or 14 months left on my lease and I'm hoping something different. I want something new, cool. Uh, I've had two Kia Sel- Seltoses and they're fine cars. I mean, they're basic, but they, you know, they have, uh, what is it? Uh, turbo? <laughs> I don't know. Turbo. They have, like, a decent engine for a uh, small SUV and everything. But I just want something new. I get That's that's one of the big reasons why I always lease, because I get very antsy. You know, halfway through my lease, I'm like, I want something new and shiny just, and different. If I hadn't just bought a $10,000 used Volvo that's worth, like, $27,000, I may have bought it here. Um That's my other thought. My other thought is I should just buy, like, a fucking used car real cheap and not have... Any payment. I can't afford it. <laughs> but anyway, thank you very much. Hey, TV Blue Dragon coming here again. Um, I, I know I just said voice man. Can you play that one? I just want to call. Oh, okay. Let me, let me play his first call. Hello, TV Blue Dragon come here. All right. So I'm listening to the Monday, October 7th show. Okay. And Let's you're playing the sport again Christian. Uh, and they're talking about the types of food that they can't eat and everything. And we talk about yeah. meats. And you go on this whole tirade of like, you know, wanting to uh, produce meat from suicide cows or whatever. Yeah, I thought that was a pretty good idea. And I kid you not, uh, I I guess you haven't seen it because if you're describing it, that is pretty much the plot line of one of the episodes of Rick and Morty, the the latest season. Oh, really? Yeah, I don't watch that show. I've never seen an episode. Um, Basically, it's the same idea, but with humans. Oh, well, <laughs> so they have like a society of humans that they're spaghetti, like their innards are spaghetti, but only. That is a good idea. You know, if you're going to have these people who are, who uh, don't want to live, want to commit suicide, why can't we just like harvest their bodies for food? I mean, commit suicide. We can. I mean, we don't have to eat it, but we can like feed it to poor people or something. You know, I'm sure they'd appreciate the nutrition. And, and then they get a whole you know enterprise out of it and whatever. It's a very very good poignant episode on the tricky subject of talking about food and our food sources and whatever. So, Is it more poignant than that Wonder Shows an episode I played you for you? I'm going to give this one to you. If you haven't seen the episode and you came that by yourself, 
Uh, I did. Even if <laughs> this is ridiculous fashion. You make some very valid points, sir. Again, Thank you. Uh, this is, Always do. This the show is more highbrow than you give yourself credit for. <laughs> okay, you're high. <laughs> What's this other call? I think the, the second voicemail is him saying, Dear God, what did I just say? Did I just call your program Highbrow? Hey, TV Blue Dragon Cup. I take that back. Here again. Um, I, I know I just said voicemail. Do you play that one? I just want to compliment with something that I forgot to say at the end, which is uh, Wing was in an episode of South Park. Thank you. Okay, well, two things. Fuck you. But also, I knew that was coming because Google translates everything, like transcribes it. So I knew what you were going to say before you said it. And because I am a free speech advocate, I didn't stop the voicemail. I let it go through. I let it. I let you get your little Wing comment through. Congratulations. By the way, is Wings still alive? We haven't heard much of her lately. Like, she hasn't come out with any new albums or anything. Maybe she's working on something. If you have real Wing information, please call the Distorted View tip line. Thank you. Uh, that is all the time we have on this edition of the program. I want you guys to email me. Show at distortedview.com. Distortedview.com is our official website. Voicemail line for you, 206-666-4463. That's 206-666. So God is it oh God. And God has blowed up the earth. Spread the distortion. STD, tell all your friends about the show. Don't forget to give us a five-star rating, a thumbs up, or like wherever you can rate and review podcasts. Tomorrow's episode is going to be Sideshow exclusive. Make sure you're signed up, superfreaksideshow.com. Otherwise, I will see you back on Friday. Until then, have a great day. Bye, everybody. This has been another blasphemous episode of Distorted View Daily. If we haven't yet mocked your religion, email show at distortedview.com, and we will get to it as soon as possible. Giving Distorted View Daily a five-star rating is the easiest way to help us out. Take a moment and do your freakly duty on Spotify and Apple Podcast. This is your announcer, Rod Urbay, reminding you to overwhelm your genitals with water. Guys will pay me to poo on their chest. How many clients do you have? I have like three, like regulars. How much per turd? I'd say like a 200. This has been another excellent podcast from the Scrod Media Group. Learn more at scrod.net.